Om and a pleasant morning to each and everyone present here. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Winston Churchill. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have gathered to honor and celebrate the remarkable achievements and unwavering perseverance of individuals who have excelled despite the odds. On this auspicious occasion at St. Aloysius deemed to be university, I extend a warm welcome to you all to the felicitation program of triumph and tenacity organized by the School of Commerce, Finance and Accountancy. Triumph is not just about victories. It is about overcoming challenges, embracing opportunities and leading with resilience. Tenacity embodies the spirit of determination and grit, which drives us to reach our goals and aspirations. As we embark on this special occasion, let us be inspired by the stories of those who have turned their dreams into reality and who continue to pave the way for future success. Their journeys reflect the essence of dedication and hard work that we cherish and aspire to emulate. Without further ado, let's delve into this program and celebrate the remarkable accomplishments that truly embody the spirit of triumph and tenacity. To commence this auspicious occasion, let us invoke the blessings of the Almighty. May we all rise, seeking divine grace to guide us through this ceremony. Welcoming is one of the greatest virtues in our tradition. To commence this program on a positive note, let us witness a captivating welcome dance by college cultural team that will express what words cannot.
chief guest for today's event mr kv kamath chairman of national bank for financing infrastructure and development we also have with us reverend father melvin joseph pinto sj rector st aloysius institutions reverend dr pravin martis sj vice chancellor st aloysius deemed to be university dr alvin desa the registrar autonomous college Dr. Dennis Fernandez, Director, Arupe Block; Dr. Manuel Tauro, Dean; Dr. Zina De Souza, Associate Dean of School of Commerce, Finance and Accountancy; and Dr. Shoba, the Head of the Department. May I request all the dignitaries to kindly grace the dais with your presence, adding distinction to this event. I request Dr. Carolina Jennifer, convener of today's program. to escort the guest to the dais sets the tone for any celebration now may i call dr manuel tauro dean to deliver the welcome address respected reverend father melvin joseph pinto rector and pro chancellor reverend father pravin martis vice chancellor padma bhushan mr k vaman kamath the chief guest of this program other dignitaries on the days my esteemed colleagues guests invitees and my dear student friends good morning and welcome to you all to this program triumph and tenacity already you have been gracefully welcomed by the dance group they deserve a rich round of applause for the graceful presentation Triumph and tenacity has a punchline: conquer challenges and celebrate victories. As the MC Rishal already explained, we have many reasons to observe this day as triumph and tenacity. It is very apt in the current context of our institution's 144 years long journey. First of all, our institution itself is in a triumphant mode. because our college has now become a university in addition we have earned a double plus in nac grade with an impressive score of 3.67 out of 4 the second highest in the state of karnataka and in the national institutional ranking framework we are within the top 100 colleges 
In fact, NRF rank of 58 this year is not a mean performance. It is a great leap forward from the previous 80th position from the last year. And all this happened in quick succession within a period of six months. Therefore, we at St. Lausius naturally jubilant and in the celebration mode. Secondly, our honorable chief guest of this morning, Padma Bhushan, Mr. K. V. Kamat, an illustrious alumnus of our institution, is also a triumphant person all through his life's journey. In the course of his brilliant academic career, he studied PUC from our college, did BE in mechanical engineering from KREC Suratkal, now NITK, and management degree from the renowned Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad. Then, as a professional, he headed several key positions in the banking, finance, and IT industries by being the CEO and the chairman of the institutions of national and international repute, such as ICICI, Asian Development Bank, ICICI Bank, Infosys Limited, BRICS Bank, and currently, besides in the board of directors of prominent corporate entities, he is the chairman of the National Bank for Financing Infrastructure and Development. In his life's journey, for his outstanding contributions, Mr. Kamath has also earned a number of accolades and awards, including the most prestigious Padma Bhushan Award in 2008 by the Government of India. He has successfully conquered all the challenges throughout his career, and so it is a time to celebrate, as he is also an eminent alumnus. We are privileged to have him here as our chief guest this morning, on behalf of the management, rector, vice chancellor, and all gathered here. I extend a warm welcome to Padmabhushan Kamath to this program and to our university. May I now request Reverend Father Melvin Joseph Pinto, our director, to florally welcome Mr. Kamath to this program. I request uh, to give a green welcome by presenting sampling. Thank you, Father. No doubt, we are witnessing a paradigm shift in the history of St. Aloysius Institution. However, to bring this transformation, the institution required dynamic leadership at the helm of affairs. It is divine providence that the wisdom of Jesuit management found two young priests to lead this institution. One, Reverend Father Melvin Joseph Pinto as the rector, and the other, Reverend Father Praveen Martis as the principal, now vice chancellor, and the duo made the perfect couple that worked with vigor, rigor, resilience, and strong resolve to transform our institution into university. While Father Martis, with his firm belief and never give up attitude, made several trips to Delhi ceaselessly in the past three years, I'm sure not less than 50 to 60 times, to meet the officials at UGC and the Union Ministry of Education to get the necessary approvals, for the rector gave him the strong backing and push so that the long cherished dream of St. Lausius becoming university realized. This proves how important it is the young and dynamic leadership at the top to transform an institution. As in Indian nation, we talk about demographic dividend of our young population. Similarly, here, at St. Aloysius, we reach rich dividend. We reap rich dividend from these two young leaders. They deserve thunderous applause. <laughs> Today, under the university setup, Father Melvin Joseph Pinto is appointed pro-chancellor and Father Praveen Martis, vice chancellor, to take this university to the next level. Several innovative programs have already been planned and set in motion 
to make St. Aloysius University an institution of excellence in higher education and research. Our dear rector, Father Melvin Joseph Pinto, president of this function, is a man with compassionate heart and admired by everyone for his gentle, humane nature. Ever since he was ordained Jesuit priest in 1997, he has held numerous responsible positions in the Jesuit society and has gained vast experience in administration from being the headmaster and the principal of schools and colleges to head the English desk for Asia and Indian languages at Vatican Communications and Radio Rome. But the Melvin is also a passionate spiritual leader and a counselor and devotes his time to listen to the grievances of students and staff and also sometimes public as well. We are indeed blessed by his presence here this morning. On behalf of all gathered here, I extend a cordial welcome to Reverend Father Melvin Pinto to this function. Our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Reverend Dr. Praveen Martis, ever since he took over the reins of this institution in 2017, has been promoting the staff and students' interests and talents in a big way by creating space for them to nurture and develop their talents. These years, in addition to academics, we are observing an unprecedented surge in the cultural, social, and extension activities and also in the co-curricular activities like sports, dance, drama, music, elocean leagues, and so on. This is solely because of the big push given by Father Martis. Students with drive and passion now have the possibilities to explore their talents here at St. Aloysius University. Father Martis has created that enabling ambience by providing the necessary infrastructure. The same is reflected in the students' satisfaction survey during our NAC evaluation and NRF ranking. We are happy that our dear Vice Chancellor, Reverend Father Pramin Martis, is present here to inspire and share his message at this ceremony. On behalf of everyone gathered here, a warm welcome to you, Reverend Father Praveen Martis, to this program. <laughs> present here on the stage are other dignitaries, Dr. Alvin Desa, Registrar of Autonomous College, Dr. Dennis Fernandez, Director of Arupe Blog, Dr. Zina de Souza, Associate Dean of Commerce, Dr. Shoba, Head of the Department of Commerce, Dr. Carolina Jennifer, the event convener, a heartfelt welcome to you all. <laughs> Among the audience, we have the directors of different blocks, deans of various schools, departmental heads, my colleagues from the Commerce Department and other departments, I accord you all a cordial welcome. We have distinguished achievers among the audience who have been specially chosen and invited to receive the honor today. We have young Elotion buddies who have acquired the qualification of ACCA, CA, and among them, some have secured ranks at the all India level and global level, and others who have won accolades at the national and international sports arena. It is you who have conquered challenges in your path, and we join in the celebration of your victories as you are going to be the ambassadors of this great institution. I feel honored to welcome you all to this program. I also extend warm welcome to other invitees and guests members of the media to this grand celebration, triumph and tenacity. Have a wonderful day. Sir, for your welcome, and I welcome you too. As a symbol of wisdom and knowledge, lighting of the lamp marks the start of this significant event. I request our esteemed guest to kindly step forward and inaugurate today's event by lighting the ceremonial lamp. <laughs> Oh, 
for lighting the lamp symbolizing the removal of darkness and the ushering in of knowledge and wisdom may i now request everyone to rise for the college anthem with great pleasure that we now move on to the release of the conference proceedings this collection is a reflection of the rigorous research insightful discussions and collaborative efforts that have taken place during the international conference held on march 19 2024 may i now request dr zina the associate dean to take over today we shall witness the proceedings that will be unveiled by the guest which we had an international conference in the month of march 2004 24 march 19 i request the dignitaries to kindly come over and unveil the proceedings thank you to all the dignitaries ladies and gentlemen it is time to honor the presence of the person who truly lifts up our even today it's none other than our chief guest mr k v kamath mr kamath has been a beacon of inspiration in their field and we are deeply privileged to have them with us on this special event saint aloysius deemed to be university on this occasion is deeply honored to celebrate your outstanding contributions and express her heartfelt appreciation for your dedication and hard work before we come together to felicitate our chief guest of the day may i please request sir to kindly take the seat of honor and here comes dr alvin dessa the registrar to read the citation on this occasion with a quote by jack wells the former ceo of general electricals he says before you are a leader success is all about growing yourself when you become a leader success is all about growing others this suits perfectly well to our chief guest today ladies and gentlemen I deem it my privilege to attempt at articulating the collective sentiments of all of us gathered here on Padma Bhushan 
Kundapur Vaman Nayak. A big round of applause. St. Elvacius, deemed to be University Mangaluru, India, proudly felicitates, recognizes, and celebrates with utmost respect and honor an eminent alumnus, a veteran banker, an inspirational and dynamic leader, an iconic symbol of the timeless Elvation Jesuit values. Padma Bhushan Kundapur Vaman Kamath. Chairman, National Bank of Financing Infrastructure and Development, proud eminent Elvation alumni awardee, former managing director and CEO of ICICI Bank, former chairman Infosys Limited, former president BRICS Bank, and many more. Citation, most respected sir, we, the management, alumni, staff, students, and all stakeholders of this prestigious university have great pleasure and delight to receive you as our most honored and cherished alumnus. Hailing from a humble beginning in his coastal town, today you have risen to the pinnacle of distinction and accomplishments, sailing through uncharted territories, with the grit and passion. You are recognized for your uncanny ability to lead and innovate in the financial sector, not just in India, but at the global stage, shining like a bright elevation star. At the outset, we acknowledge your creative acumen and action-driven innovative initiatives in the global financial sector. Hearty congratulations to you. Your inexplicable ascent to the coveted and iconic current stature started with your initial formative education in a humble, nondescript Kannada medium school, and none would have dreamed of this young boy would one day reach such unprecedented heights of accomplishments and accolades. As destiny would have it, you enrolled for the erstwhile one-year pre-university studies at St. Elvisius Composite College. Considering your commendable academic attainment, you had the privilege of getting admission into the prestigious Karnataka Regional, Regional Engineering College, KREC, Suratkal, for the mechanical engineering stream. You continued to display your ability for erudition and scholarship and were accepted as the renowned Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad, to earn the award of the master's degree in management. The very first assignment in your career in the project finance division in ICICI Bank, you demonstrated highest level of leadership skills and transformed the financial institution into a diversified technology-driven financial services group across banking, insurance, and asset management in India with a global presence. As a part of the Asian Development Bank, Manila, you were assigned to work for several projects across India, China, Indonesia, Bangladesh, Vietnam, and the Philippines, along with being on boards of companies as ADB representative. It is a matter of great pride that you have served as a chairman in Fosys Limited, one of the Indians leading IT export companies, observing your notable contribution and acumen for reforms in the global financial sector, you were appointed the first president of the new development bank, a multilateral development bank established by the BRICS countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Your leadership and commitment to reforms and diversification the Government of India has appointed you as a Chairman of the National Bank for Financing Infrastructure and Development, the newly formed government-owned financial institution funding infrastructure projects in India. We would like to congratulate you for this unique and most required service to the nation. A big round of applause to sir.
Ladies and gentlemen, Sri K. V. Kamath was formally awarded India's third highest civilian award, Padma Bhushan, in 2008 for his contribution in the fields of trade and industry. For his valuable lifetime contribution to the banking and finance sectors, he has been felicitated and awarded the Lifetime Achievement Awards several times. He has been conferred Business Leader of the Year in 2007 by the Economic Times, Outstanding Business Leader of the Year in 2006 by CNBC, Asian Business Leader of the Year, Best CEO for Innovative HR Practices, HR Practices at the World HR Congress, Most Tech Savvy CEO in Asian Banks by Asian Banks Journal, Singapore, and Businessman of the Year by Forbes India, to just name a few. Dear Sir, as we acknowledge your contribution to the world of trade, industry, banking, and finance, we wish you the best of health and contentment, as well as long tenure of dedicated service to the nation and humanity. We salute you for being in, instrumental in transforming the face of the economy through your creativity, imagination, and courage that is most required for an innovator like you. Ladies and gentlemen, this iconic individual that we have in front of you deserves nothing less than a standing ovation. May I request each and every one of you to kindly rise and give a loud round of applause and standing ovation for this iconic elevation who has taken the name of our college also flying high. Thank you. Kindly be seated. This citation was read and presented to Padma Bhushan Sri K. V. Kamath during the institutional felicitation held on Tuesday, 3rd September 2024 in LCRI Hall of the University. And the citation is signed by Reverend Dr. Praveen Martis S.J., Vice Chancellor, and Reverend Father Melvin J. Pinto S.J., Rector, St. Elvisius Institutions. Thank you. May I request all the dignitaries to come forward and honor Mr. K.V. Kamat. To begin with, I request Reverend Father Melvin Joseph Pinto, SJ Rector, to honor Sir with the shawl and garland. May I request our Vice Chancellor to present the PETA to our Honorable Chief Guest. I now request the Registrar to present a citation in recognition of Mr. K.V. Kamal. Now I call upon Dean to present a token of our appreciation in the form of fruit basket. And I request Dr. Dennis Fernandez, Director, to present a memento symbolizing our gratitude and fond memories of this event. Let there be a huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, on this very special occasion. Thank you dignitaries for doing the honours and thank you sir for graciously accepting our token of appreciation. Inspire and transform. We are honoured to have Mr. K. V. Kamath with us today whose words carry wisdom and vision. Now I call sir to share his words of wisdom. Father Martis, uh, Vice Chancellor, uh, faculty of this great institution, parents of uh, students who are uh, outstanding achievers and students and uh, the students who will achieve uh, in the future uh, good morning to you and it's, uh, it's a very humbling uh, feeling when one stands uh, 
the dais of uh, your own alma mater. And uh, there is a rush of thoughts of the time you spent uh, in school and uh, college, because I spent uh, from my sixth grade uh, to my PUC in uh, these hills, as it were, the St. Lucius uh, Hills umbrella of uh, what I would say is uh, all that I am today. So my grounding is here, and uh, hence it's a very emotional moment. I thank uh, the college uh, pro-chancellor and vice-chancellor for inviting me here today, and for uh, recognizing what uh, uh, what a student, our student from this school, this university, uh, has been able to do uh, in a wider world. I'm saying this uh, only because I believe that all of you who are uh, today uh, you know, graduates or graduating from this great institution can do much more than what uh, I would have uh, achieved over these years. Uh, if I look back uh, into the context of the subject matter for today, triumph and tenacity, and I think that's what we want to celebrate all the achievers here. Uh, maybe I thought uh, it is best rather than giving a speech to share a part of my own journey in terms of uh, you know, tenacity and triumph, more as lessons uh, that one can, uh, you know, in a way, internalize to see what can be done. And um, you know, I, would, I would really start in uh, 1996, when I was invited to come back to ICICI to be the CEO of the company. It was not ICICI Bank, then it was ICICI. ICICI Bank was a very small subsidiary of uh, the parent, ICICI, which was a very large company. Um, we were in the lending business. We were also uh, lending to projects. Uh, that was our primary business. It was about 50 years old. But the first uh, challenge that uh, we faced and uh, the tenacity that we had to show was in 1996 when uh, Indian industry was opened up. You know, it was a closed economy till the 90s and then uh, everything was opened up. And uh, as a consequence, uh, almost all our clients, the customers of ICICI, the various industries, you name any big industry, they were our clients. They were all under uh, facing challenges because uh, they could not cope up with competition. So. A phrase that you will often remember in your career as you go along is competition. So uh, in those days, uh, Indian industry could not face up with competition and so uh, they could not pay us as a bank and these were the challenges we faced. Uh, so we needed uh, something new to do, uh, not just uh, project financing. So that was the first challenge. What do we do new? Because our life was spent in uh, uh, doing project loans and project finance. And around that time, uh, my experience in Asia with Asian Development Bank indicated that uh, at a particular level of economic development, people uh, you know, want a home loan, want a car loan, want things to go into their house, or want a credit card, and so on. So in short, what we call as personal finance, which uh, anybody of you who's going to look at a banking career uh, will see retail credit or retail loans as a thing. So we, in a way, pioneered it. Uh, there was only uh, one institution providing home loans at that point of time, late 90s. And we said, we are going to go into this. And we, did, we had no knowledge of this business. And that sometimes is very foolish. You get into businesses where you have no knowledge. But you, know, you have to be tenacious. Uh, your back is to the wall. There is no other uh, option. And uh, I call this uh, in another phrase. In your life, you will have something called the theory of constraints. That is, anywhere you look, there is a constraint. And your challenge is, how do you overcome that constraint and then get to the next uh, level? So here our constraint was our core business, which was project finance was not doable or clients are not doing well. So you had to think, you had to think, how do I uh, then uh, keep my business going? And we thought of retail. And I won't go into how we put together the retail team. Uh, we did uh, several things. We bought some companies, we hired people, but we got the retail business going. And that actually started the whole you know, all the development that you see in retail finance stems to the late 90s with the, the initiatives that were taken. And then, of course, others joined the bandwagon. The other interesting thing that happened then was there was no technology. So you went into a bank, uh, you uh, stood at, uh, you know, in a queue to deposit cash, you stood in a queue to withdraw cash. Now, all of you are going to think, what is, what is Mr. Kama talking about? We never go into a branch and stand in a line. We don't uh, 
to deposit money or withdraw money. What is he talking about? But we are talking of just 20, 20, 25 years back in India. So you went in the and you stood in line for 15 to 20 minutes. So we we said, can we not disrupt this? And how? We said uh, we will put in uh, ATMs, and uh, the branch will be completely you know computerized, and uh, it will be technology driven. And all the things that happen in the bank branch. Whatever can be done in the back office will be done in the back office because you are online connected. So why do you need uh, people to sit in the branch? That people in the branch can serve the customer. So again, constraint. You know, you have to show tenacity, and uh, you put in those ATMs. So there were 30 ATMs in uh, 2000 in India. In 2001, we said we will we will put in 1,000 ATMs, and we did. And I think in a way that caused a revolution in terms of what happened thereafter because. The customer didn't have to go and stand 20 minutes in line to deposit or withdraw cash. At least withdrawal was instantaneous. You could go to an ATM and pluck the money out. Today with UPI, you don't even have to stand at the ATM. You'll probably do, an, uh, do a UPI transfer to the extent that you want. So transformation happens when uh, you recognize uh, there is a challenge. Uh, you have the tenacity to grapple with it and you jump over the constraint. The constraint uh, was... The constraint was heightened, and I'll just put that into context. Uh, in a because we were not given the privilege of opening more branches. We had about 100 branches, 150 branches. We were a very small bank. And we were told you can open only 50 branches a year. So you could never grow. And I won't put it in size. The largest bank uh, at that time had 10,000 branches. And we were being given a license to open 50 new branches in a year. So I'm sure we can do our basic arithmetic. That would have taken us 200 years uh, to get to 10,000 branches. So that was not feasible. That's why technology. That's why uh, you know ATMs. I'm, I'm slowly trying to push the idea that when you have a constraint, jump higher. Think laterally. Think completely differently from what conventional uh, people would do. And uh, you will find a, a solution. You will find a, that there's a way to do it. So we did that. And as we were sitting before we were coming here, I was sharing with the the learned professors, that we didn't have the people. So a year later, the Reserve Bank said, that you can open 500 branches or any number of branches that you want. Very great. But then he said, where are the people? We need for 500 branches, 10, 000, I mean 5,000 people. Where are the 5,000 skilled people who know how to operate a computer, who are technology, you know, at least basic savviness, and uh, no, no, no banking? So we had to run our own training program. So we... Uh, tied up with NIIT to uh, train people. Then we tied up with actually those days Manipal University to open a campus in Bangalore to train 1,000 people who would come in as branch managers and deputy managers. So that is 500 uh, uh, branches that we're opening every year could have about 1,000 people plus 5,000 people as staff. And so on. Of course, then it scaled up. But I'm telling you that at each stage in life, uh, you know, you will face uh, thing and say, well, this is a wall. Uh, I can't uh, do anything about it. And uh, my suggestion and thought is that when that happens, uh, what you have to say is, oh, it's a wall, I'll jump over it. So everything is there to climb or jump. I will cross that wall and I will, uh, do, I will build a different future. So this was uh, you know, the early days of uh, ICICI Bank, uh, when we grew the bank using uh, technology and people, building up people and building up technology. Uh, then came a very interesting phase where uh, technology you know, started evolving at a much faster pace than uh, what it had, or maybe the previous hundred years. Uh, and uh, you all know the, you know the pet phrases that we use, open source and that. And this. There again, you know, people were not uh, using, uh, uh, even today, if you see, banks uh, can use more of technology, modern technology in uh, whatever they do. Probably today, the customer of the bank uses uh, more modern technology than does uh, uh, the, the bank itself. Because, and uh, you will probably ask the bank to provide you more technology. And if you don't get it, you will go to somebody else who will provide you the technology and uh, the ease of using uh, uh, you know, that to make your life uh, simple. Uh, it was internet banking, but now it's basically all app-based banking. And that's where... Uh, very interesting, you will find the fintechs today, the, the digitech firms uh, competing with you as uh, you uh, go along, if you are in the financial services business. Uh, I'll just maybe uh, share uh, a few minutes, a couple of minutes on uh, 
the experience with the uh, BRICS Bank, you know, there was mention of BRICS Bank. The BRICS Bank is a bank uh, founded by the five countries, uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and uh, South Africa. And uh, I had to go to Shanghai to set it up. And I was based in Sang Shanghai uh, for five years. Now, I'm putting it in context because uh, this was a very interesting experience. Again, theory of constraints. Because you are working with five different cultures. You know, in India, we are, we are Indian, so we are working with one culture. We may come from different parts of uh, India. But here you are working with five different cultures, people who have been brought up in completely different ways, who speak completely different languages. There is, of course, English to bind you, but you have to lead and you have to build uh, this organization. So it is a very interesting experience. And you, you could also see how development happens, because uh, living in China, China has uh, developed remarkably well for the last 15, 20 years. You could see how it happens and uh, how you know, what lessons it could have. But here again, I want to put a theory of constraint. <laughs> you may say this is, uh, Mr. Kamath is talking too much of theory of constraint. When I was asked whether I would uh, go and uh, you know, set up the BRICS Bank, uh, what is called the New Development Bank uh, in Shanghai in 2015, uh, I was actually 68 years old and they had to go and do it for five years. I'm not trying to say that, oh, you went at 68. I'm saying in your life, there are no constraints. Even age should not be looked at as a constraint, and you can achieve uh, things as you uh, go along. Uh, coming back to uh, the current, uh, this was a bit of the past. I think uh, what excites me is uh, what excites me is the opportunity of India, and within this, what all of you will have to uh, do, and that I think is actually more important than what I talked about the past. Uh, that was basically to try to say that uh, life is a set of challenges a very apt title, uh, tenacity to triumph, very correct for today. So what is the opportunity and how will you uh, seize it? As I look at it, uh, you know, what uh, our Prime Minister has said that uh, it's a 25-year runway, the Amrit Kal period, uh, is in my mind absolutely correct. There is a runway which is very long. So why do we say there is a runway? So if you look, at, uh, look around us, uh, we start with the infrastructure. There's an unfinished agenda, and uh, this infrastructure that we need to put in into our country, roads, rails, sports, at all, every single thing, except telecommunication where we are probably today in, on par with the world. Everywhere else, we are behind and we, ha we have so much to do. So if we lay out uh, all these things, we are looking at uh, you know, continuing to put infrastructure in for the next 15 to 20 years. So you already have 20 year agenda. Uh, the next agenda that we see is uh, growth in urban, rural, you know, I would say, places. So, for example, Mangalore has to transform. Now, uh, all of you, uh, if you drive around Mangalore, and yesterday I was driving around Mangalore, and I counted where all has the traffic jam started, and I said, this is going to compound. Nantur Cross was one, uh, Balmatta was uh, one, then you go down to Kankanadi, there was another one, so, so on and so forth. Four or five places where there's a traffic jam. I think you have been, you know, living here, you see it creeping on you, but it's suddenly going to get into a pro proportion where it's going to be. So you need to revamp infrastructure so that these traffic jams don't happen and things move smoothly. Metro rapid transit has to come to Mangalore so that you have uh, other ways rather than uh, a bus or uh, your car or your motorcycle. So now imagine this across all the towns and cities in India. And imagine it across all the rural places in India, 600,000, uh, 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 you know, I would say places where you may need to uh, put this in. And there's an opportunity that goes for a very long period of time. That's just the infrastructure opportunity. Then all the, you know, you, you need to produce all the stuff that goes into infrastructure, steel, cement, and then uh, you know, providing homes to uh, India's people. So if people say that, uh, you know, there is no opportunity in India, you, you should uh, debunk it right away. The opportunity is a huge opportunity. And we have seen in uh, the case of China that it takes a long time, 15 to 20 years, for all this to happen. All that I have said has happened in China uh, over all these uh, years, at least 15 to 20 years. And the country grew at about over 10% uh, during the period of uh, this growth. So to me, we can't avoid uh, these elements of growth and putting in all these uh, building blocks that we have and the growing for a very long period of time. That is the essential part of your career. During your career, you will have opportunities. Uh, one thing that you will have to do probably as you go along, because this is 
become a very fast changing world, not the world that we graduated from. Uh, and uh, you will need to reskill yourself as you go along. But it's not a, it's not going to be a very challenging reskilling. A lot of reskilling you already are doing without understanding and giving it a title. Reskilling will not mean uh, going to colleges. Re reskilling will not mean going again to college. You'll have to go to your basic college, but don't have to go again to college. But probably all the reskilling that you have to do, you can do it online. You can reskill yourself online. Now, I, I can say this that I am reskilling myself on a continuous basis online even today. Otherwise, you know, I would not have uh, you know, known uh, what is technology and how to use it in the various businesses that I have been associated with. I have not gone back to school after engineering college. And what has taught to me in engineering college is not the technology that we are using today in uh, the outside world. So it's, it's a different set and you learn it yourself. And today, your access to this technology is, uh, is, is I think, much, much easier than even five years back or 10 years back. The only suggestion I would have is uh, for this, uh, keep an open mind. You need to allow ideas to come in. You need to look at uh, you know, ideas and things and then connect the dots. And I think that gives you, uh, I would say, the fit as to what next uh, you should be doing. So to me, uh, education in your life, at least in my life, has been uh, an unending uh, journey. And uh, I'm reasonably sure uh, in your life also, education will be an unending journey, but it will be a fun journey. Uh, you will not be at any point of time constrained that, oh, but you know, this is something I don't know. You will, you will figure it out because today there are sources to that uh, education. So to just put this in context, what I have said in the last uh, two minutes, uh, you are in a land of opportunity. Uh, you are in a place where uh, for the next 25 years, you will have opportunity. Uh, after 25 years, other things will happen, but I can't, uh, I can't read into the future. But 25 years, certainly. You will live in uh, an India where uh, growth rates are going to be very high. Uh, I would say upwards of 7% will be our uh, economic growth rate. Uh, you will live in an India where, uh, let's say, new opportunities and new type of, uh, you know, I would say, professions will open up as you go along. And for that, you will have to prepare uh, as you go along. And uh, as far as uh, we were also discussing uh, earlier on, uh, what do colleges and institutions do? They also will need to prepare the student for tomorrow. So I was uh, just jokingly saying, please take, take this as a joke. I said, uh, in school, uh, I learned trigonometry. In college, I learned trigonometry. In engineering, I used trigonometry, I learned trigonometry. But after, uh, you know, at the age of 77, I'm still trying to figure, figure out where do I use trigonometry? Because I've never used trigonometry in my life. <laughs> so I, I, mean it, uh, I mean it in a very humble way. There are so many things that uh, we learn, but we do not know why we should learn it. So, you know, I was thinking if now we are a deemed university, we can set the agenda what we think uh, our student ought to know and f start from that. And any subject that is taught, just have, uh, you know, maybe one or two sessions. Where are you going to use it? Then teach what is relevant and then end by saying these, these, these places you will, you will use it. If you do that, whatever you think you're not going to apply, uh, you will, uh, you know, not apply. I, mean, I took this as something all of you have gone through, but I seek the pardon of uh, the professors. It was in no way, this has been happening for, and the same is true in other areas. So it's uh, same is true in economics. We talk of a lot of theories. We talk of deficits should move in this way, that way, which all of you will figure out once you come into the job market, but it doesn't work that way. So, uh, so we need to change with the times in uh, the, the education and the curriculum. And I'm sure this ramp, uh, revamp will happen. And for those of you who have graduated, good, you have graduated. Now you, have, you are free to uh, learn this on your own and free to figure out uh, how you can go and uh, apply what you uh, have learned. So I, won't, uh, you know, I wanted to just give you a gist that life is uh, full of challenges. Uh, life is full of, I use this main constraints and uh, only tenacity and uh, your willingness and your uh, firmness of mind to jump over uh, this constraint uh, will, uh, you know, take you to the next level. And that then is the green horizon out there, which is uh, triumph. So I wish you uh, a great success in your careers. Uh, for those of you who are already graduated, for those who are graduating, I'm sure you will do extremely well and also reach uh, these great heights. And uh, I again compliment uh, the university for selecting this subject. 
triumph and tenacity for uh, today's occasion. That is what picked up by me, so picked up by the university. Thank you very much. Challenges are what makes life interesting. Overcoming them is what makes life meaningful. Our students have excelled in various fields and it is now time to acknowledge the efforts put in by you, our brilliant students. I request the dignitaries to come forward and felicitate our students. May I call Dr. Carolina Jennifer to read out the names. It's my great pleasure to introduce our esteemed students who have successfully passed Chartered Accountancy Examination. Your dedication and commitment to excellence are commendable. I now invite our CA students to come forward to receive the honours. CA Aishwari Diona Rebolo. Round of applause. CA Sushir Shetty. Smarin Nayak Parents can accompany their student, I mean the uh, children's C.A.J. Shah C.A. Shubra Shetty C.A. Hariza Khalid Aiba Navas, CA Melita Smita Pais, CA Rishika Kayes, CA Rohan K. CA Royal Vegas CA Yashis MB Rashmi Kamil Continuing our celebration of academic achievement, I am delighted to invite our CMA affiliates. Join Via Fernandez CMA. Mohammed 
Ara CMA. I would now like to acknowledge the outstanding achievements of, our, of ACC affiliates. Their dedication and hard work, exceptional knowledge in the field of accounting have made them a part. Please join me in congratulating and recognizing our ACC affiliates. Nafid Savada, ACC. Vineet Nixon de Souza, ACCA. Janice Emilia Sequeira, ACCA. Mohammad Sahil Hassan, ACC. Cheryl Mabit Rego, ACC. Jansila Teresa Kutina, ACC. Prince Till Janis Mascarenas, ACC. Aishwarya Ramesh, ACC. Gian Maria de Souza, ACC. Sharon Raina Fernandez, ACC. Michelle Lenita de Souza, ACC. Joswin Edric de Souza, ACC. Now, let's turn our attention to remarkable achievements of our BCom graduates. We would like to acknowledge outstanding BCom topper, Ria Monalisa de Souza. We would like to acknowledge MCOM topper Vanessa Monteiro. MCOM topper Divina Elosia Mascarenas. We 
are thrilled to honor exceptional athletic accomplishment of of two of our talented students the dedication hard work and perseverance in their respective sports have made and brought great pride to our institution let's recognize nishil dalfina disouza for her outstanding achievement in powerlifting we would like to acknowledge roshni shenoy who has earned silver medal in yoga your discipline flexibility and mental focus are admirable thank you dignitaries for felicitating our students thank you dear students for thank you dignitaries for doing the honors and a big congratulations to all our achievers your hard work determination and perseverance have truly paid off we wish you all a continued success in all your future endeavors we derive inspiration from our role models whose words of wisdom help us reach greater heights i now request our beloved vice chancellor reverend dr pravin martis sj to deliver his message kv kamath padma bhushan illustrious alumnus of st elvishus institutions reverend father melvin joseph pinto the rector pro chancellor of st elvishus deemed to be university registrar dr alvin desa dr denis fernandez the director of arope block dr manuel tauro dean of commerce accountancy and financing dr zina the associate dean dr shobha the head of the department of the d school of uh, commerce dr carolina jennifer the convener of today's triumph and tenacity members of the faculty my dear parents and the achievers of great success of triumph and my dear students it is a honor to have padma bhushan shri k v kamath with us himself is a message and an example for us of triumph and tenacity his young age he has gone up to this height is a great admiration for us and an inspiration for all of us at st elvishus would imagine about 60 years ago he has completed his studies many of us are not born i think your parents also were not born at that time so he had completed his studies and after that he went on to achieve great success and we feel when our world students really do wonderful things they truly become our ambassadors and that's how the institution grows with the achievement of our students and we are very happy that shri k v kamat has done that i was in touch with him few years now he's also supported our institution in many ways in getting this deemed to be university also i was in touch with him so also put a word to the important dignitaries in the ministry as well as ugc and whenever we had this mba program and mca program here and also in the campus of biri along with father denzel he has uh, remarkably helped our institution grow to this side so sir we are grateful to you for all that you have been to us said said elvisius even now at this young age he is 77 he has come to us to inspire i think that is something remarkable for us as we have become a deemed to be university and we are extremely happy that he has accepted our invitation and came here and gave us a wonderful message today for the youngsters as he said during his time we did not have this kind of infrastructure this kind of facilities either in the institution or in the society at large but today you got so many facilities 
the world is moving faster and in this world which moves quite faster you will also have to move fast and you will have to also achieve and for you there's a great example there's a great model in sri kb kamath who has achieved this success in a very short time and you could achieve now much more and become our ambassadors that is our expectation that is what we look forward and as we move on what are the areas that you can achieve success with the desire that you have with the passion that you move on with the tenacity that you need to show and also the resilient you need to continuously show resilient and move forward never to give up attitude coming out of your own comfort zone and reading the signs of times this is a very important we learn something today as a university now we are able to make lot of difference we are asking sri k v kamath how to really make a difference he says that we need to bridge the gap between industry and academia i think we will be able to do so with your guidance and with your advice so that our students when they pass out from here itself they are job ready so that you don't have to get an extra training we'll also be in touch with a lot of industries a lot of companies and also invite them into our board of studies into our academic council and our advisory so that they can guide us and our students when they complete their graduation and their post graduation their industry ready and also to create a alumni base unfortunately we don't have that strong alumni base with us i remember when the tcs company came a few years ago i requested them to recruit our students then he asked me this question how old is your institution i told them it's 144 year old we are not that old and he said if you can use your database rightly you don't require our presence make use of the presence of your own old students who are there all over the world doing extremely well and connect with them and we will go and go to another institution whereas your institution just can connect with your own world students and build on their academics their profile and move on i think that is where we started working on the database of our world students and ambassadors and trying to see that our students can get the job immediately at the same time we are also moving in another direction of startups or entrepreneurship last year we had one student who started his company as a student here itself and doing extremely well now in bangalore and there are many other students who are now achieving that success with the incubation center that we created with the section 8 company so that you can start thinking now itself as students so that will help you to achieve great success you can create jobs we are also looking forward to not only job seekers but job providers that is how the shri k v kamath has done all over the world creating jobs to so many people around creating that skill and movement forward i think that is what is required today you as a students bright students who are here achieved that great success with completing your ca or cma or acc affiliates and also some of them in sports and other areas of your life so i would like to congratulate you i would like to congratulate your let your parents so that you continue to do this achievement don't stop it whole education as sri k v kama just now said is a process is a lifelong process of a journey where we continue to learn continue to progress continue to show our tenacity and make a difference in the lives of the others and the institution and get back to your alma mater like sri k v kama the zelpers to grow as an institution so continue to help so it is ultimately the generation of students will benefit out of the growth that you have so that we continuously move forward making a difference in the society become change agents that is what we are called to be to become men and women for and with others i would like to thank the department of commerce the school of commerce for organizing this wonderful program today triumph and tenacity uh, let's all give them a huge round of applause for their work
Once again, I thank uh, Sri K. B. Kamath for his gracious presence here and a wonderful message to all of us. And I thank all the parents and the students who make, made it here to receive this honor. And I wish all the present students to have a great success in their life. Thank you. God bless us. Your inspiring words that have ignited our spirits. Your wisdom will continue to guide us as we embark on the journey ahead. In the spirit of Franklin D. Roosevelt, who once said, the only limit to a realization of tomorrow will be our doubts of today. It is now my privilege to invite Reverend Father Melvin Pinto S.J., Rector, Padma Bhushan, Sri Kevi Kamad, and the chief, the chief guest of the day, and our alumnus, and I say our benefactor, Reverend Dr. Praveen Mathis, the Vice Chancellor of St. Louis's Deemed to be University, and the other dignitaries on the days, uh, members of the staff, uh, those of you who have uh, won the awards for the great achievements, and uh, the students gathered here. I feel very privileged to be part of this celebration here. And uh, I really admire the one who coined this phrase today, triumph and tenacity. When I say triumph and tenacity, I, I really feel very happy because uh, on the one hand, you have reached a milestone, you feel triumphant, but yet it's on the journey of life, you don't reach a milestone and stop, you keep going. And for that you require tenacity. And that tenacity is there within you. It's a frame of mind that you say, I want to go on and on, never give up with small failures, but keep on going, becoming more and more triumphant and all with a purpose in mind to make a difference to society. And so I congratulate very specially all those of you who have won the, we shall say, St. Louis's Awards for your great triumph in CA, ACCA, sports or whatever. Congratulations to you. As I said, it's, it's a journey that you have got to undertake and for which you will have to prepare yourselves. Many of you gathered here are present students of St. Elvishes. You watched each one go up there, receive that award and uh, honor. Uh, and you might have also felt, someday I should be doing this too. For, it, for which you require that tenacity and in order to be triumphant, carry on with that hard work. I come to that point where uh, Sri Kevi Kamath mentioned about how useful is your studies. You know, he gave an, uh, an example of trigonometry uh, and we all felt quite amused and at the same time we said, probably uh, he has not found his answer why trigonometry is useful in mathematics. I am neither a Mathematician, I've only heard that word trigonometry and uh, tried to memorize its spelling, nothing beyond that. But then I suppose mathematicians would definitely know how it is useful. Probably they have not communicated that to us. Similarly, there are so many things in our studies which we would get stuck with and say, we know this, we know this principle, we know this idea, but what is it, how is it useful is something that we never think of. Sri Kevi Kamath was also speaking about opportunities. It is only when you sit down and grapple with these things as to how is my syllabus, whatever we have studied in class today, how is it useful, I think we'll come up with special ideas. He gave an example of all those sit standing in the queue in a bank decades ago, to now the ATMs that you have. I suppose people came together to plan it out and to bring out an ATM. It didn't just happen overnight. But a lot of groundwork took place there. And that groundwork has to happen in places such as universities. Sometimes I feel sad when I find uh, students, you know, just sitting around gossiping, fooling each other. 
Good, it's necessary. I suppose it has got a time. But I would like to have a, a scene created where uh, students are sitting around, uh, let's say, in that Mother Teresa uh, park, or wherever there are so many other spots within the... I would like to create a few more spots if you come up with ideas. A few more spots like that within the uh, campus where you sit down and, uh, you know, very informally bring up certain problems and say how we can find a solution to it. How we can find a solution to it. And when you find that as an opportunity, you grapple with the problem, you discover that it is no longer a problem, it is an opportunity to come up with something. That is what a startup is all about. You can do it in an incubation center, but you can do it also informally when you're seated among yourselves. And for this, your knowledge alone is not sufficient. Today we speak about interlinking of so many subjects. You've got friends across your, let's say, I, I suppose most of you are commerce students here. But if you were to go beyond, uh, discuss something with a science student, somebody with uh, physics and chemistry or whatever, microbiology, and discuss with them, what do you have for this? This is what we were discussing. What do you feel about it? Do you think there is something that you can come up with? And when we keep discussing these things, I'm sure a lot of ideas will be generated. And these ideas are necessary for our country to bring about a change. What you might think as a silly idea turns out to be a fantastic one. And then we realize we have contributed something to the country. That's what uh, Sri Kevi Kamath has done and he has presented them himself to you as a great example. And I feel very proud and privileged sir, that you are here with us today and that we had a chance to honor you. I, for a change, had only heard your name, but I had a chance today to meet you. And I feel nice that, you know, you are presented as a role model for our students today to keep thinking, innovating, and saying, yes, we have a task to perform. And that is tenacity. So if it is triumph for those award winners, the other, for others it is tenacity to say, yes, I have a task cut out to do something. I wish you all the best. I know you will have that spark in your hearts. Let that spark turn out to be transformed into a big flame which can consume you, your thoughts, your ideas and come out with something wonderful for ourselves, for our nation and for humanity. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Father, for your passionate and kind words. Gratitude is a fairest blossom which springs from the soul. Now, without further ado, I would like to invite Dr. Shoba, head of the department, to deliver the vote of thanks. Good morning, everyone. As we reach the end of this momentous occasion, it's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks. First and foremost, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to Reverend Father Melvin Pinto SJ, Rector, St. Aloysius Institutions, for presiding over this program and sharing valuable insights with us today. Thank you, Father. Thanks to Reverend Dr. Praveen Martis SJ, Vice Chancellor, for your unwavering leadership and support. Your vision and guidance have been instrumental in making this program a grand success. Thank you, Father. I extend my sincere gratitude to our esteemed chief guest, Mr. K.V. Kamath. Sir, your motivating words have left an indelible mark on our minds and we are grateful for the knowledge and insights you have shared with us today. I'm sure you have inspired and enlightened young minds with your expertise and vision. Now, may I request a Vice Chancellor, Reverend Dr. Praveen Martis SJ, to present a memento to our chief guest as a token of gratitude.
thanks to Dr. Aurin Desa, Registrar, for your valuable presence and contributions to this program. <laughs> Dr. Dennis Fernandez, Director, Arupe Block, is a strong support behind all our departmental activities. Thank you, sir, for being part of today's program. I am profoundly grateful to Dr. Manuel Tauro, Dean, School of Commerce, for his commitment towards organizing today's program in a very meticulous manner, which is truly commendable. Thank you, sir. Thanks to Dr. Zina D'Souza, Associate Dean, School of Commerce, for bringing out the Proceedings of International Conference organized by the School of Commerce. Thank you, ma'am. I thank the program convener, Dr. Carolina Jennifer, Associate Professor, for her tireless efforts in organizing this program in a diligent and prompt, prompt manner. Thank you, madam. Thanks to the organizing committee and technical staff for your invaluable assistance throughout this program. My deep sense of appreciation goes to Ms. Rachel de Souza, Assistant Professor, for comparing today's program so effectively. <laughs> My thanks goes to all the student achievers for accepting our invitation and making this occasion a memorable one. Through your perseverance and hard work, you have made your alma mater incredibly proud. Best wishes for your future endeavors. <laughs> Thanks to the cultural team for that outstanding dance performance and to the college choir for adding beauty to this program through that meaningful hymn. To the media and publicity team, thank you for spreading the word and helping us reach out to a wider audience. <laughs> Thanks to all the staff and student participants, your presence, participation, and enthusiasm have made this program truly special and rewarding one. <laughs> As I conclude, I once again thank Thank you all for being a part of this wonderful occasion. Have a great day. Thank you, ma'am. As we conclude our program, I would like to extend a heartfelt congratulations to all our achievers once again. We are confident that you will continue to excel in your future endeavors and make a mark in the professional world. Thank you to our chief guest, rector, Vice Chancellor, all guests, faculty members, and everyone present here for making this event a memorable one. Let us continue to celebrate excellence and inspire each other to reach greater heights. Wishing everyone a wonderful day ahead. <laughs>